everybody. I'm Greg Grant from the Extension Meat Specialist here at the University of Kentucky, and we have... I'm Kathy Burns. I'm one of the Family Consumer Sciences agents in Kenton County. Yeah, and we're up here in Kenton County to talk about something that is part of our heritage here in Kentucky. The one good thing about my job is I get an opportunity to travel not only the state, the country, as well as the world sometimes. And the one thing I have learned is that each state, each region of the country has a food that is uniquely theirs. For example, if I go up to Maine, it's a lobster roll. If I mm -hmm. go to Memphis, it's barbecue, barbecue brisket down in Texas and so on. But here in Kentucky, we have the country ham. Mm -hmm. It's part of our food heritage, part of the food heritage of the southeastern part of the United States as well. And we also have a pretty large 4-H uh, country ham project as well. And one of the big questions we always get after the state fair is, what do I do with this thing, <laughs> all right? Does it need to be refrigerated? How do I cook it? And so on and so forth. So what I thought we would do to get today is get together and discuss various ways of cooking this country ham. Uh, for example, the, the old slice it up and fry it or bake it, mm -hmm. those are your standards, but we can get into all kinds of different dishes that you're gonna go through today. So we have this ham right here. We just uh, unwrapped this ham and I realized for TV purposes, mm -hmm. it, it's not very yeah. attractive. We understand Doesn't that. Doesn't look too good to me. Yeah, no, uh -huh. but this is typically what you're going to see when you unwrap a ham. It is very common to see some mold on there. Now this one doesn't have very much mold. Uh, it's very common to see some of the, the uh, cure that didn't uh, penetrate the ham being on there as well. If you have your ham frozen or refrigerated, which you don't necessarily have to do that, okay, uh, you're going to have kind of this muted color versus what you've seen at the state fair with those hams is there. So this is very common of what you're going to see when you unwrap a ham. Even if you get a grocery store bought ham, you're going to see the same thing. And don't panic, okay? <laughs> you can call me, you can call your FCS agent in your local county, even your ag agent would know as well, 4-H agents would know too. This is very common to see some mold on here, to see that on there. And essentially all you really need to have is a good scrub brush. You can see we got one right here. And you can use some vinegar mixed in with some water, about a 10% vinegar solution in your water. And you could scrub the ham to make sure that you get all that stuff off there before you uh, start to cook it. So the best thing to like, just take it over to the sink, running water, yeah. Oh, yeah. go after it. You can take it over to the <laughs> sink. We'll have a sink big enough, uh, a bucket outside with a okay. garden hose. I mean, uh, okay. th there's an old Ricky Skagg song out there called You Can't Hurt Ham, okay? <laughs> so, uh, the, and that was a throw to the uh, country ham, as we know Ricky Skaggs <laughs> is from this area as well. But uh, you can do whatever you need to. The, this guy, you know, uh, doesn't require a whole lot of uh, TLC. You can, you can bang them around pretty hard and you're not going to hurt them. So running, running cold water. Running cold water on the ham. And, and uh, yeah, the question always is, is what is an average size of these hams as, as Kathy scrubs this ham down here? Uh, typically, when we put them in cure, especially for the 4-H hams, we start out with about a 25-pound ham. Okay. And over the curing process, the aging process, sometimes referred to as the summer sweat, uh, that ham goes from about 25 pounds down to around 15 pounds or so. Uh, judging by this ham, I'm no, not a real good judge of weight without a scale there, you're probably talking about a 13 to 15 pound ham, which is fairly common. And that's what makes these, these hams, as we say in the meats industry, shelf stable, is we know that uh, all life needs water to survive and bacteria is no different. And so what we've ended up doing with that moisture loss from that 25 pounds down to 15 pounds, we've reduced the amount of moisture in these hams. You have to realize that muscle uh, meat in its fresh uh, state is around 25, uh, or excuse me, around 75% water. Okay. And so losing that amount of water over the time helps reduce that water activity, that amount of water needed for bacterial growth. And that's what makes these uh, hams so shelf stable. Um, one of the things that a lot of folks ask about is, you know, do they have to be refrigerated? 
they really don't have to be refrigerated. Uh, you're not going to hurt anything if you refrigerate them. But mm -hmm. this is a throwback to the way food was preserved <laughs> long before we had mechanical refrigeration. We really only had mechanical refrigeration for around a hundred so years. I'm seeing some other white stuff come off, but that might be cure. It's not all mold, right? Yeah, it could be that... cure. It could be just kind of the, uh, the, the, the process of being washed, kind of like being in a swimming pool too long and your hands get pruny and white uh -huh. like that. So it could be some of that as well, but nothing okay. to be uh, too alarmed about. We can get some paper towels okay. or a towel to dry it off. Let's see, I might need your help. Yep, I got you here. <laughs> Pat him dry. Yeah. Okay. Looks a lot better. We got a lot of that mold off of there. We got some of that excess cure off of there as well. And here's the other aspect of what makes these guys shelf stable. Not only have we reduced the water activity, but the main ingredient we use to cure these hams is salt. Mm -hmm. And so we know that bacteria doesn't like salt, okay? okay? Right. And so there's a lot of salt in there. So when we go to cure these hams, if you're not used to uh, eating a country ham, now the country ham is going to be far different in texture and flavor than mm -hmm. your city ham, which everybody is used right. to, is that is your traditional wet cured ham, or what sometimes referred to as an everyday ham. And so... These guy, this guy's probably around 6% salt, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. They need to lose at least 18% of their green weight, which is the uncured uh, uh, phrase we use uh, uh, for hams, but it also has to contain at least 4% salt. Mm -hmm. The longer you age these guys, so this ham is roughly around 9 to 10 months old. Uh -huh. The longer you age them, the more moisture you're going to lose, but that salt concentration goes up. Okay. So if folks are not uh, used to eating a country ham, the very first time you eat this, mm -hmm. all you're going to taste is salt. Salt. <laughs> you're going to taste salt. So we have a method of kind of unbrining, if you will, that will help suck some of that salt out and make these a little bit more palatable to the new palate, if you will, for mm -hmm. country mm -hmm. hams. Okay. All right. Let's go do that. Let's do that. We have gotten our ham and we have washed it off, but we have a big cooler sitting down there. Yeah, Is the, that some uh, some beverages. Maybe? Well, it could be. Uh, <laughs> uh, depends on what kind of party you're going to have your country <laughs> ham. Uh, but soaking the ham, coolers work wonders for country ham. Obviously, clean the cooler out. Absolutely. You know, it goes without saying. Absolutely. But as you're. Is we're gonna, you're going to show us here, sometimes the cooler might be more convenient because it's got that little drain yeah. plug on the side, but you have a big stock I pot do. here. This is a huge stock pot that you, you may or may not have something like this. You might have a turkey fryer, um, and those have that same, same kind of pot, but this I can get in my refrigerator. I use it a lot for brining my turkey. Um, I'm going to put my ham in there, so... Uh, we have got our ham, you know, he's a, he's a, a big guy. I'm just going to get him in here. Now, much like with your turkey fryer, if you're frying a turkey, it's probably best to put your ham in and add water or make sure that you do the displacement theory there so you don't fill it all the way up <laughs> and put a ham in and you got yeah. water all over the kitchen. Yeah. And this guy fit really good, so he's totally immersed in water, and that's what I want. He's right? totally immersed in water. And chemistry-wise, what's happening there is the water is being soaked in there forcing some of that salt out of the okay. ham, all right? Now, is it going to, are you still going to be able to taste the salt in the final product? Absolutely, you're going to do that, but it's mm -hmm. taking some of that out. So what we don't want to do is, like you mentioned earlier, brining your turkey for mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. We don't want that to happen, so about every eight hours or mm -hmm. so, maybe 12 hours at the, at the furthest point, we need to change the water and refresh the water oh. so we don't end up pulling the salt oh, out yeah. and then putting, putting it back, back in. in. And like I said earlier, that's where you know the, uh, the uh, ice chest or your yes. cooler works best. It's got that little plug on the side, whereas you'd have to kind of pick that's that pretty up heavy. and be pretty heavy. When, now, if you've got weightlifters in the house, this is the way to go. <laughs> when I did that at home, I had to get a big measuring cup and get most of the water out. Yep. Then I could grab the ham, get it out, and change the water. Exactly. So you're right. It was yeah. a lot more labor-intensive, but... Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. It worked for me. Exactly. And, and if you're one of those that feel they have to be refrigerated, uh, mm -hmm. like you that said earlier, fits. this fits in your mm -hmm. refrigerator. You know, for folks at home, you may have to take some shelves out. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Kind of stuff there. Or if you're like uh, like me, you have a refrigerator down in your basement. Uh -huh. Works well for that. Yes. Or if you you can't get your your cooler in there, you can put some ice in there if okay. you want to keep it cold. But that's just a personal preference okay. type thing that makes you feel better if it's cold. Okay. It works sure. Because yeah. it is so dry, like you said. Exactly. Um, exactly. What do they yeah. call that? Water activity? Water like activity, yeah. That's There's a big, long uh, <laughs> biochemistry, organic chemistry oh, type on. definition yeah. to Woo. it. But I just say the amount of water available for bacteria. There you go. And that's great. So uh, we do want to remember to change that water, though. That's really yeah. Important. You got to change that water. I would. I suggest between eight to twelve hours to do it. You don't uh -huh. want to go much beyond twelve hours because then all of a sudden. We're just rebrining the okay. handle, so to speak. And how long totally should I leave that in there? Usually we go about 24 hours okay. or so, right. and uh, it should be pull out enough of that salt for the, the new country ham connoisseurs uh -huh. to get the flavor nuances mm -hmm. versus just the salt. Uh, I want to do a shout out to the Hinman family, Audrey Hinman in uh, Kenton County. They supplied us with ham and ham slices, so mm -hmm. I'm very appreciative of that. Um, and this is one I baked yesterday. Yes. Okay. So I know you can boil them, mm -hmm. you can bake them, or some people slice them and fry them. Get them sliced yep. ahead of time and fry them. Yep. You can bake it with a cola product. Um, you can bake it with water. You can do it with a combination. Lots of options out there. And that does also help with flavor, right? Yeah, exactly. You mentioned a, a, a soda or cola type uh -huh. thing. And really, that's done to kind of counteract some of the hmm. harsh flavor of the salt. So you got that sweetness of the yeah. soda getting in there as okay. well. And so if you really want to add a Kentucky flair to it, maybe some ale Aid or those of you in the southern <laughs> part go. of the state, some ski, you know, have ooh, some fun ooh, with it. <laughs> uh -huh. your, your country ham is always going to be unique. That'll That's be right. awesome. That's right. Uh, what I did with this one mm -hmm. is um, I was a little uh, close on time and space. I put it in a cooking bag. I okay. took one of my, just like I do for my turkey, um, I put it in the, the bag. I put it in the oven at, I uh, started at 325, then I just lowered it to 300. Mm -hmm. um, I know most of the recommendations are like 15, 20, 25 minutes a pound. And this guy was 17 pounds. I put him on okay. my bathroom scale <laughs> and he was pretty heavy. So it took five hours. Um, and what I did was um, I, I flipped it once in the bag. You've got to watch that because those bags will break. You got to be very careful. It's not really recommended to do that. But I got all this wonderful juice that was coming yeah. off of it that I wanted to you know, uh, continue to, to, to cook it in that. Um, but I cooked it till it was 140 degrees at the thickest part. And then it was done, and then I cooled it, and now I've got now a big old ham. We've got a big old ham we're gonna slice. <laughs> now, I don't know if you know this or not, these uh, uh, juices that came off uh -huh. there, you can find a recipe for red eye gravy and use that to put that in there as well. So nothing that's, goes. That's pretty. Goes that's wasting. what I figured. I was like, oh, I got to keep that. That's yeah, you got to keep that. You got to keep that. Yeah, exactly. Now through the magic of television, so to speak, this was in the refrigerator. So you kind of see these pockets here. We we left them here, those there for a reason. And essentially, what we're going to do is take the skin off, and I'll show you why we put, left, left those pockets on there. Okay, and it's probably something you guys have seen. Uh, before when you like put a, uh, a beef roast in a crock pot or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, and I suspect this is going to happen. Okay. But you can see how once you get it baked like that, you can kind of take your fingers okay. and take that skin off of oh, there. Boy. And you see those pockets. And really what I was, I was thinking was going to happen, yeah, exactly. You see kind of oh, that wow. gel there. Mm -hmm. um, you kind of see that gel in there. And that's what I thought that was going to be was uh, that gel, which is connective tissue, that because we're all made of you know protein and connective tissue, and that's what holds everything together. And because you had it in a cooking bag, mm -hmm. it had that moist heat in there, that's the oh. perfect thing to produce that collagen, is its uh, uh, scientific name there is collagen, is that's the perfect thing to get that stuff out, and uh, then when you cool off it, it uh, it re-solidifies, and again, that's what you would see if you ever cook a roast in a crock pot, and at mm -hmm. the you take the meat out and you let the crock let pot cool, cool down, and you get that gel in the bottom. Yes. Same thing. Okay. Same thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you see that? Looking we're pretty good. Flip him over here. Okay. So this is the rind. Yeah, so the rind. Yeah, okay. the skin that was left on there, okay. and and uh, uh, again. People say, can you cook it without it? You can. The good thing about this is it helps keep some of that moisture oh, inside yeah. there as well. I put that on there. 
Yeah. So put that there. Okay. And, yeah. Now, it's, it's a little bit beyond making into a pig skin, you know, for yeah. uh, footballs and stuff <laughs> like that. But the, what's neat about the, the uh, Bake Country ham is uh, it's got a very different texture and flavor profile versus if you were to just slice it and fry it. And so a lot of times you could come in here with your knife. Okay. And this doesn't, you know, people say, how do I do this correctly? I... There's really no right or wrong way when you get to this point here. We're just trying to get it cut up for dinner. And so what I typically like to do is get me a paper towel here. And really, even though I've got, we've got latex gloves on, they get a little slick. Mm -hmm. And from a knife safety standpoint, you don't want that to happen. Uh, you also got your steel here to keep your knife sharp as well. And so what I'm going to do is come in here. You see I made this, this bone right here is half of the pelvic girdle. We call it in the meats industry, we call it an H bone. And so I went in down there until I could start to feel the bone. You see how my knife is not going mm -hmm. in any further, come up around the bone and all of a sudden we really sink in oh. there. And that's why I started out with a big knife because I thought that's what was gonna happen immediately. But we come along here, okay? And from that cut that we made, we can, you can use your body, be careful when you start cutting towards yourself. And we can take this piece off right here, okay? So you're gonna, you can let it cool for a half hour before you do this, but you're still gonna be warm inside there. And mm -hmm. so if, you, uh, if your hands are sensitive to uh, temperature, uh, if you get some latex gloves like we have, but get them a little bit bigger, then get some cotton gloves to put on underneath okay. there to help protect your hand. Your hands, you can do that as well. So you can see we already started getting pieces coming off. This is kind of a neat thing, the hmm. patella. Uh, you'll see this sometimes referred to as the knuckle of the ham or uh, the tip of the ham is what you hear it called sometimes. And so we cut that guy off. You see I'm going to start to cut all this dehydrated surface off of here that even though we soaked it, that's still on there. So we need to get that stuff off as well. Okay. Take a little bit off over here. So this just wouldn't ever cook. Yeah, like, it's just little... yeah, it's just the, the surface of the ham, and so you get mm -hmm. that kind of nice dried yeah. appearance there. And so take a little bit more of the fat off back here, and this is where you're going to switch to this bigger knife. And sometimes it'll slice up really nice like this. And I'm a big fan of the of the thinner slices as you can get it. All right. Mm -hmm. And I was reading that. If you bake a ham, it's a little more coarse, where if you boil it, it's a little more like what you, like we called before, city ham, a little yeah. more tender. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you can see, oh you know, the texture's Good. a little bit different than what you would get uh, in a uh, in a in just a traditional fried country ham, or even if you're talking about the city ham again. Mm -hmm. And this knuckle piece right here, as you can see, it's coming off in these pieces. These make for really good biscuit cuts. That looks, and, yes, it's just right size, right? Just shape. the right size to fit on a biscuit. And that was kind of the, the attraction of the country ham to our early settlers was not only was it a shelf stable product, but the uh, farm wife would have the ham, have the biscuits for breakfast and so on. Mm -hmm. And so when breakfast was over, she could leave the ham out on the table. She could leave the biscuits out on the table. And as, as the farm workers came in, they could slice off a piece of ham, uh -huh. put that on a, on a biscuit, and uh, that's where the ham biscuit was kind of born, uh -huh, is that, that kind of necessity type thing. But you can see... Boy, that uh, looks delicious. Yeah. And that's just a small part of that big ham. That's just a small <laughs> part there, yeah. And you can see uh, we got those nice slices, and we'll, we'll just pretend we've cut all that. <laughs> A um, couple other things we can do, all right, this is where it gets a little bit more challenging, but I'm going to do a kind of an easier way of doing it. So you can see where the tip of my knife is, that's that femur bone, all right, mm -hmm. and you'll see some people come in here and kind of V cut around that femur bone and remove it. I'm going to do something a little bit easier for you, and let's just take the muscle off the top of the femur, so I'm going to go straight down to the butcher block. Just like so. Now we may have to come in around yeah. this knuckle here, <laughs> okay? Just like so. There we go. Seam oh. right there. 
All right, and then we can, now it makes it a little bit easier taking that bone okay. out of there. And you can, if you want to, come up here, back by the heel of the ham. Come around. And this is probably a little bit safer way of doing it because now I'm cutting down towards the mm -hmm. block and not cutting towards my body as well. Okay. And again, there's no right or way, wrong way to do this. Everybody says, what's the right way? And I said, well, I'm going to get my hand out of there. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Lesson one. Yeah, that's always one of those things we talk about, even with carving turkeys, is making sure, you know, when you're carving a turkey that people don't have their hands in there because they're trying to grab it. Yeah. And that's going to be the same thing with this guy as it well, is. is you're going to have people reaching in for the piece, you know. Yes, just a little taste. A little taste. We call that quality assurance. That's right. There's a little bit of a bone right here that we take off. And get in there and then now all of a sudden kind of look around here let's take a little bit more of that dehydrated surface off of there it's all about the same tenderness right it's not like a piece of beef where like any of this would be good for any kind of recipe would yeah it correct? would yeah exactly and, and of course you know we are talking about great big muscles of locomotion because this was this was used to move the pig from point a to point b mm -hmm. so you know they're going to be a little bit tougher but you cook that in moisture and so that's going to help dissolve, as we talked about earlier, uh, it's going to dissolve all that connective tissue mm -hmm. in there, that, that gelatin that we got. And that's going to help make these guys a little bit more tender. And you said five hours to cook this guy. It's, it's, you know, it's, you know, again, that's mm -hmm. more time inside that, uh, that bag. Right. It helps to keep those juices inside mm -hmm. there. And so when we do that, um, that helps break this guy down and make it okay. more tender. Okay. Yeah. So it sure looks good. It doesn't look dry. It doesn't. No, look, it doesn't look dry at all. Nice you can see we come in here again and continue with those cuts right okay. there. You know, and, and what we're talking about, this is a very traditional way of making a country ham. Like I said, the baking it, or if you wanted to with the state before we, we baked it, we could slice it. Okay? Uh -huh. That requires a little bit more uh, technology than your average person would have. Uh, makes it a lot easier if you have a meat bandsaw, not a wood bandsaw, <laughs> okay? Um, which, you know, some of your deer hunters that are a lot into the mm. do-it-yourself type thing, they may have one of those. Sometimes you can talk your local grocery store into cutting that up for you as well. Uh, so, it, you know, if you want to do that kind of stuff... Um, that is ham in its in its its essence, right mm -hmm. there. You know, is what okay. we've done. And that's why we, right. we were slicing everything really thin here. Is we made this great big piece of jerky, mm -hmm. and so if you do a thicker cut, it's going to be harder to bite through, and so a thinner cut mm -hmm. works better. Okay. Uh, I'm one of these guys uh, uh, that when you get your your traditional country ham slice and you cook them up. We have a big problem in this country of overcooking things. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. and so. Country ham is no different. Okay. Um, couple ways that I found you can do it. Now, this is just me, mm -hmm. all right? If I have to do it on a stove top like we have over here, cast uh -huh. iron skillet. Ooh, okay. Yep. If you've got a gas grill, even if you want to fire up a, mm -hmm. a, a, a charcoal grill, about 45 seconds to a minute per side wow. on that okay. charcoal grill or your gas grill uh -huh. totally changes the flavor profile versus the, the oh, uh, cast iron skillet there. Okay. So various, those are traditional ways of doing a country ham. And now uh -huh. we have this thing in extension we call teaching moments. Okay, you probably <laughs> had those as well. And I don't know if we could focus right on in here. I'm going to try to get that the tip of my knife there. And you kind of, some of you may have noticed out of and watching the video here is you see those little white speckles through there and you'll see this a lot of times in grocery stores that white speckles mm -hmm. that is an amino acid it's called tyrosine is his name and because he is uh, he's very salt sensitive and okay. so since we're using so much salt he comes out of solution so to speak uh -huh. and those white specks in there are essentially tyrosine but your average consumer sees that, oh, there's something wrong. It's just, it's natural. Okay. It's natural. Okay. There's nothing wrong with it, but it does beg for us to talk about it Yeah, as well. sure, sure. So, so it, it doesn't affect the taste or the, uh, the profile flavor uh -huh. of the ham Tenderness. or the texture or anything like that. It's just one of those things that, okay. that looks different. Yeah, good to different. know. Good to know, exactly. So we have our sliced country ham. We talked about frying the country ham, whether we do it on a cast iron skillet or an outdoor grill. We talked about baking it. You mm -hmm. alluded to boiling, boiling the ham. 
Um, I went to grad school with a guy from Tennessee, and I always call that the Tennessee method because that's how he did it. Uh -huh. Where you basically the big that stock big pot, pot uh -huh. that we had, yeah. And you talk about the turkey fryer works perfect for that. Oh sure. Put the ham in there, cover it. Uh, bring it to a boil, and what he would do, as soon as it got to a boil, he would seal the top, take it off the heat, wrap it in blankets, and uh -huh. it was there for 24 hours. That's, that's a boiled ham there. Yeah. So you could do that, but, you know, that's these methods are cool, uh -huh. but I think you got some other recipes. I do, I that do. Was, is, that takes this guy to the next step. I've got lots of things, because I love ham, but boy, after two, three, four nights, yeah, of ham, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of hammed out, right? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, we're going to share some different recipes and some ways to preserve this ham too to make it, even at this point, last a little bit longer. You bet. Okay. So a lot of everyday dishes that you might not have thought about before that you can use your country ham for. Uh, let's see, country ham and cheese sliders. Yum, slider buns are great, and they I love those nice little sandwiches. Um, scrambled eggs, ham biscuits, as you can see, deviled eggs, omelets, quiche. What about potato salad? Put some in your potato salad for a little flair. Ham salad, the Kentucky hot brown. Ooh, with, with country ham, yum. Uh, let's see, you can get fancy and do something like chicken cordon bleu, which is just a chicken breast that's usually butterflied with ham and cheese in the center. Just use some country ham for that. Um, I like to just put it on a salad, like a chef salad. You can also make um, some croquettes uh, out of them as well. So lots of options for you. Sky's the limit. I think what's really neat is you've explored different ways yeah. of taking that country ham and putting mm -hmm. it in different dishes. So what do we have yeah, here? Yeah, thanks. Um, it's been fun, yeah. you know, and you will find a lot of recipes that say country ham, but then I just took ham recipes. Yeah. And they're they're just fine, right? So uh, first of all, I've got a couple right here that are from our Plated Up Kentucky Proud mm -hmm. um, project. And um, this is a broccoli, which is a little scoop of this right here. Um, it's It's been cooked and cooled. You would serve this warm. But um, it's a broccoli um, and grits with country ham. So really nice breakfast casserole very or, or southern, dinner very and southern. very southern. Yeah. And I love breakfast for dinner a lot there of times, so that works. Um, this is a ham and asparagus quiche that I just put country ham in, just cut it up real small. Um, now, I, when I did these, I took the slices mm -hmm. that um, yep. I had gotten, and here was just some examples of them that I wanted to share. When I got them, they had been frozen. They were fine. Um, in fact, you can freeze this for many years, yeah, right? Yeah, as long I mean, as it's, yeah, exactly. You're not going to get a whole lot of freezer burn with these because they don't have a lot, a lot of moisture. That's uh -huh. that freezer burn is those crystals coming, or the moisture coming through forming those uh, ice crystals. But, yeah, you can, yeah. as long as they're frozen, they're, they're you know. Exactly. Yeah, long I, time. I noticed they, they did really well. But I did think that, because these were, were not cooked ahead of time. So I did soak these. Mm -hmm. I soaked them about 30 minutes yeah. in some just some water. And, and that would explain kind of the muted color that yeah. they have versus when they were fresher. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And just, to, again, kind of pull off. And you could see yeah. some of that more salt oh, coming yeah, off exactly. of it. Exactly. Um, and I just wanted to share these couple pieces. So um, this is near the end, of course, right? Got yeah. a lot of bone, what, and muscle there. Um, so with this piece, I'd probably say this for a pot of beans. Or maybe yeah, some beans Yeah, exactly, soup, right? exactly. Yeah, because what you're looking at there is, remember we talked about that H bone. Oh, that's it. that's that pelvic girdle there. That's the head of the femur right there. So if you want an anatomy lesson, there you go. Right <laughs> there, there it is. But you, yeah, you're absolutely right. That works well for you know seasoning beans mm -hmm. or something along those lines. Because you know you can get in there and dig out all yeah, the meat off that bone. Bit, but, but you get into that that old economic term of law of diminishing returns. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Where I had some, like here was a really pretty slice, mm -hmm. and it was just an example of what I use. So um, most of these, after I soaked them a few minutes, I, I patted them dry, and then I pan fried them yeah. because I wanted to have them ready. So, because as we said, at this point, this is ready to eat, right? Exactly, exactly. But this was not, because it yeah. was a sliced ham that had not been cooked ahead of time. So, I just, like you said, lightly pan fried them, mm -hmm. because I knew I was going to be heating them again. Got them, got them done, let them cool, and then I cut them up for a lot of these little small yeah, little dishes. So, ham salad is another one. Country ham salad. It's... It's pretty yummy. This is a pretty basic recipe that just has um, a little cubes of ham, um, pickle relish, just a little bit of mayo. It's mm -hmm. it's very meaty, which I like, mm -hmm, yeah. um, and I think that's got some good flavor. Biscuits and ham. You had mentioned that, and I had to had to bring that out. Absolutely, you know? absolutely, gotta, yes. Gotta have that. Um, and then Dr. Renfro in front of you. 
Have you ever heard of a ham cheesecake? I have not. <laughs> I, I am intrigued, but you know, ham and cheese go together. That's right. and I don't know anybody that doesn't like cake. Exactly, so. exactly. So um, this was from the FCS agents. We did a, a book several years ago called The Pride of Kentucky, and mm -hmm. we all contributed recipes, and this was in there. And I had a coworker that told me how much she enjoyed it. And so um, the crust is a just a, a cracker crumb, but it has Parmesan cheese in okay, it. Okay, okay. So that really helps. And then it's kind of your typical cheese cheesecake as far as cream cheese um, it also has some of that um, herb flavored cream cheese mm -hmm. in it as well and eggs and all that good stuff and then you can see chives and then of course pieces I cut the um, ham very very small for that um, and then I baked it and so this would be like a savory cheesecake to yeah. me kind of like a quiche yeah um, yeah I but, can see that yeah. and, and I could see in predicting that uh, you've got the saltiness of the ham, and now you got the sweetness of the cheesecake, kind of like we yeah. talked about earlier with the cola yeah. and the baking process to kind of calm some of that salt that down. That is right, yeah. So I, um, I'm really excited about that yeah. one, too. I, I wanted to dig in, but we wanted to leave it pretty. So, um, <laughs> And then in front of you, I just took some of the slices, and this was a really a simple way to do this, too, was I really literally just took slices like this. I did go ahead and remove the bone so that it was easy to eat. You know, mm -hmm. when, when it came out of the oven, it was done. So I cut away the bone and the extra fat, and I literally just took... Um, these slices of ham and packed brown sugar around them and just sealed it up and baked them for about an hour, hour and a half. And Excellent. man, I'm Excellent. ready for that too, you know. Yeah. So um, those are just some examples. Um, mm -hmm. I want to talk to you about storage yeah. because that's a question we get a lot um, in FCS. Yeah, exactly. And we get that question a lot, like I mentioned earlier with mm -hmm. the uh, 4-H project at State Fair. You know, we got all these people yes. running around trying to get hams. I got these parents lined up. <laughs> what do we do with this afterwards? <laughs> It doesn't necessarily have to be refrigerated. When we start cutting into it like this, mm -hmm. yes, it needs to be refrigerated. I always suggest that people refrigerate after you slice it. Uh -huh. You uh, refrigerate your sliced uh, uh, country ham uh, steaks or slices. Um, but as whole, it, it hasn't been refrigerated mm -hmm. since Mother Nature provided refrigeration <laughs> when we started the 4-H project as well. So then we get into the question, okay, it doesn't need to be refrigerated, but where can I take it and store it at yeah, home? right. And so there's a few things we've learned over the years. You know, for example, um, there's some people that put it in their garage. Okay. Nothing wrong with doing that, but if you're one of those weird people that actually park your car in yeah. your garage... Then you you, yeah, every time you start your car yeah. up, every time you start the lawnmower up, in my case, you start the motorcycle up, uh, it's yeah. going to absorb some okay. of that exhaust. So, you know, not the best idea. It, not the best mm -hmm. idea as well. And then, you know, in the summertime, the door's up and down. Right. You may get the neighborhood cat, neighborhood dog in there. So mm -hmm. that is an option, but just kind of buyer beware on that. And vermin, aren't they more attractive? Yeah, to you? exactly. You're, you're more susceptible to the bugs and, and the mice and yeah. so on and so forth. Um, you can put them in your basement if you have a basement, but just realize that basements are higher moisture areas, so True. you're going to get a little bit more mold growing on there as okay. well. And other people say, well, I just keep it in my closet. Well, if you keep closing your closet, guess what your clothes are going to smell <laughs> like? So, so you know, there's, there's options you can use. You just uh -huh. kind of, you know, do what you think is best. Okay. And other people just take it home and say, okay, I know it's going to get saltier the longer it's aged. So if I do mm -hmm. the garage, the basement, the closet, I even had somebody put it in an attic one time. Uh -huh. It's going to continue to lose moisture and the salt level is going to go up. Okay. So what a lot of folks will do is just take it home and put it in the freezer and then if I need it for a holiday or something along yeah. those lines I'll pull it out a couple okay. weeks ahead of time and let it thaw and then we're good to go. Okay and that that makes a whole lot of sense and um, freezing the slices getting it that they got that sliced at um, a grocery store local store and yeah. froze those and and um, I know the recommendations a lot of times say a year but mm -hmm. we know that as long as it's kept as long as the freezer has stayed on it's safe. It's safe, right? yeah. And, and even if you hang it uh, in, you know, like in those locations we talked about, mm -hmm. I only recommend about a year, maybe 18 months at the most. Okay. And, and the reason why I say that is it's not that if you go to a two-year-old ham, because some of our dry-cured European hams mm -hmm. are cured two or three years okay. or age that long. Uh -huh. 
different technique. You know, we often yeah. refer to the country ham as the redneck cousin to prosciutto, <laughs> but uh, that's a different way of maintaining okay. the flavor of those guys mm -hmm. and not letting them lose as much uh, moisture. But if you if you do go beyond that, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just going to be really, really salty there. So that's why I usually say around a year to 18 okay. months, if you're going to age them that long, um, they're going to get harder. They're going to get saltier as they go, go through that aging process. But, you know, we get into the whole concept like we were talking off camera. What is edible versus the culinary experience? Uh -huh. So those right. ones that are two, three years old, yes, they're edible. but and are they're you, safe. And they're safe. But are you going to have that culinary mm -hmm. experience you're looking for? Probably yeah. not. Probably we, not. Yeah, we, you know, we get folks a call with, they'll find something mystery meat in the freezer. It's yeah. like, is it still good? And yeah. it's like, well, it, it's probably safe, but I don't know if it's good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, good, right? yeah. Yeah, it, we have those discussions with our, our, our students all the time. You know, what is good? What is quality? What is healthy? Yeah, kind of right. Stuff yeah, because you lose nutrients. You lose go, nutrients. Go and, and, you know, for some people, health is calorie. Some people, health is is protein content. Right. Others are the yeah. way it was raised, organic, natural, so on and so forth. Okay. But I do think you have some nutritional information I on do. these guys since we're talking about yeah. health and, and content yeah. and that kind of stuff. So a, a four ounce serving, which mm -hmm. we always say three ounces about the size of the palm of your hand. So a four ounce, just a little bit bigger than that, um, is about two, 200, 220 calories. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it is a good source of protein, about 31 grams. It's yeah. a good source of protein. Um, of course, high in sodium. We talked about that, and that's that's the, the issue for a lot of people. So just kind of keep that in mind. But um, you know, it can certainly be a good part of any meal. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, we always say variety of foods, and um, this is just a small sampling. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about all the diff other different things you could do with that ham. You know, just some of the basic things you don't think about, like um, an omelet, scrambled eggs, a chef's salad. Um, gosh, sky's the limit. Well, um, you mentioned deviled eggs. Deviled earlier. eggs, putting yeah. little pieces of that in there. You know, you just kind of and, and think about what you normally use. Um, city ham or any other kind of ham and give it a try, you know, mm -hmm. just, just try a little bit at a time because the flavor is more intense, it is. right? It is, and yeah. you're going to notice that. Um, one other thing I noticed, you know, I can buy slices in the grocery store, yeah. not refrigerated, right? Yeah, not but refrigerated. We cannot do that at home. I, yeah, I mean, are they doing a different process than we're doing? No. But those that you see in the grocery store, those have gone through testing to make sure that they can be okay. shelf stable. Our 4-H hams or your home-cured yeah. hams, we haven't gone through that. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah. that's why I always tell people, once you slice it, to be on the safe side, let's just refrigerate exactly. it or freeze it, you know, uh -huh. so that we don't run into situations Absolutely. Like that. Yeah, I was reading that, um, you know, if, if I have this sliced and it's not cooked, but it's cut, um, if I wrap it really well, mm -hmm. it can be in my refrigerator two, three months. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then, of course, go into the freezer if I want to. Um, leftovers <laughs> like this, they're good for about seven days mm -hmm. in the refrigerator. I could even freeze that again, again, for a recipe Absolutely. probably. Absolutely. It's got to start degrading in quality mm -hmm. as far as... Yeah. Not um, safety, but yeah. just the, Quality, the yeah. product that itself. Culinary the culinary experience. The culinary experience, right? <laughs> but the other thing we want to remind people is that um, it's kind of our two-hour rule. Like, for example, like these we just brought out of the oven. I want to do something with that within two hours, you yes, know? So absolutely. we have, you know, we've eaten it, we cleaned up, just get it in the fridge, get in, get a package, get it chilled. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit safer absolutely. because we've got really good food. We want to keep it safe. But, Wow. Yeah. This is exciting. You know, I, I, I have to say that I'm always into watching the food shows. Oh, yeah. You know? And the bad thing about the food shows is they're on TV and we don't get to try it. So, sorry, folks. We're going to eat. So, <laughs> That's uh, right. If you have any questions about country hams or in general, you can contact mm -hmm. me. I, again, I'm Greg Renfro. I'm the Extension Meat Specialist. Contact your local mm -hmm. county FCS agent or even your 4-H agents on yeah. country hams because, uh, like I said, we have a very big 4-H country ham mm -hmm. project. And our agents have done a really good job of educating themselves, and they can answer those questions mm -hmm. as well. So whenever you have a question, please, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for coming up. Yes. And uh, this was a lot of fun. I always learn. I'm always learning. Yeah. And always discovering new things. So. You bet. Dr. Info, I thank you. Thank you.